problem eight. Problem eight. How many more degrees of arc are there in one fourth of a circle than one fifth of a circle? All right. So one fourth of a circle, one fourth of a circle has how many degrees? So it's one fourth times the degrees in a circle. So it's what? 360 degrees, which is equal to what? What's 360 divided by four? It's 90 degrees, right? One fourth times 360 is 90 degrees. So that's one fourth. That's one fourth of a circle. Right? One fifth of a circle times 360 is equals what? 360 divided by 5, which is equal to 72, right? 35, right? 72. So that equals 72 degrees. That's in one fifth of a circle. And they're asking how many more degrees of an arc are there in one fourth of a circle than one fifth? So what's 90 minus 72? Well, that's what, 18 degrees. That's answer B. Next problem. Problem nine. Problem nine. Let me draw the axes. There we go. And then they have, let's see, they have a curve. A curve that looks something like this. It goes through the origin and it looks like it's symmetric. It goes like this. And it keeps going. And they tell us that this is the point. This is the point minus six comma zero. And then they tell us, well, do they tell us? Let me see. They have this point, and they say that this is one and this is one. This is the point seven comma six up here, seven comma six, and they're saying that this is six comma zero. Although they don't draw a little point there, which makes me a little suspicious. Maybe they just forgot. Based on the graph of the function f above, what are the values of x for which f of x is negative? So when is f of x negative? Well, it's negative in this range from, from here to here. That's when it's negative. So what values of x are its negative? Well, at 0, it's 0. So 0 doesn't count. So x has to be greater than 0. x is greater than 0, because we can't count 0, because at 0, the function is actually 0. And we want to know negative, and 0 isn't a negative number. And what does x have to be less than? Well, this is 0.6. So x has to be less than 6. So that is choice b. Not too hard, huh? You just have to say, when does it dip below the x-axis? Well, between when x is between 0 and 6. Next problem. Let me switch colors. The figure above, oh boy, do I have to draw this? The figure above shows the dimensions of a pedestal constructed of four, four layers of marble. Each layer is a rectangular solid that is one foot high and has a square base. How many cubic feet of marble? Yes, I have to draw this. So at the top, the top I have a cube that looks like that. It's one by one by one. Then they have an, another marble looks like this. It's one high, and then of course you know it's two wide, right? So let's just start doing the volumes immediately. The volume of the top one is one. The volume of the second one is what? Two by two by one. It's two times two times one, which equals four. The volume of the next one is what? Goes out like this. It's three by three by one, right? So what is its volume? Three by three by one. This is three by three by one. So it equals nine. I think you start seeing the pattern here. And then finally we have the fourth one. The fourth one looks like looks like that. I'm not gonna draw it fully. You get the point. But it's gonna be four four by four by one. Four by four by one, which is equal to sixteen. So the volume of all of them combined is 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16. That's 5 plus 9 plus 16. That's 14 plus 16. That equals 30. And that's choice C. Next problem. Problem 11. Problem 11. If x and y are positive integers and 4 to the 2x is equal to 2y. What is x in terms of y? Whenever you see something like this, and you see a 4 and a 2, just convert them all to the same base. 
So how do you write four with, as a you know two to you know two to some powers four, right? How do you write four as a function of as a expression with two to, as exponential expression with two? My brain is malfunctioning. Well, that's the same thing as two squared, right? So that's two squared times two to the x is equal to two to the y. And we add exponents when we multiply two numbers with the same base. So you get that's two to the two plus x is equal to y. Sorry, is equal to two to the y. So two plus x must equal y. Two plus x is equal to y. And they do this all the time in the SAT, so you should really get you know these are easy problems if you just remember to do this and remember your exponent rules. And they want x in terms of y, so subtract two from both sides. So you get x is equal to y minus two. And that is choice A. Next problem, problem twelve. Problem twelve. If the degree measures of the angles of a triangle are the ratio of two to three to four, how many degrees does the measure of the largest angle exceed the measure of the smallest angle? So let's say that the smallest angle is ooh, I don't know. Let's say the smallest angle is two x, right? Then the middle angle is going to be three x. And then the, four, the largest angle is going to be 4x, right? And if I were to draw a triangle, it would look like this. 2x, 3x, 4x. 4x, not 45, 4x. So they, and they all have to add up to 180, because they're the angles of a triangle. So 2x plus 3x plus 4x is going to equal 180. And what is this? This is 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4 is 9. So 9x is equal to 180. x is equal to 20, right? So the smallest angle is going to be 40 degrees, and the largest angle is going to be 80 degrees, right? 4 times 20. And they want to know by how many degrees does the measure of the largest angle exceed the measure of the smallest angle? So it's 80 minus 40. The largest minus the smallest. 80 minus 40 is equal to 40. And that is choice C. Next problem. Switch colors. Problem 13. The rate, the rate for a telephone call between city A and city B is 50 cents. So A to B is 50 cents for the first minute and 30 cents for each minute or portion thereof. So 50 minutes, for, 50 cents for the first minute, and then every extra minute you charge 30 cents. So it's 30 cents every extra minute. So if n is the number of minutes. The first minute's there, so every minute above the first minute. So that's n minus 1, right? If you do it for 2 minutes, you get charged 50 cents. And then 2 minus 1 is 1, so then plus 30 cents, right? And this is for n minutes. I'm assuming n is minutes. All right. Which of the following functions describes the cost in dollars of a phone call between the two cities that lasts for n minutes if n is a positive integer? All right, well, what did I write here? What choice is that? That is choice D. And once again, how did I think about this? If I say you know the cost of n minutes, it's a function of n minutes. It equals well the first minute is going to be 50 cents, and then for every minute after the first minute, so every minute after the first minute can be represented by n minus one, right? The second minute, so two minus one, I get I get charged one minute after the first minute. If I, if I speak for two minutes, and for every minute after the first minute, I'm going to get charged 30 cents. And so that's how we did it. Problem 14. I don't know if I have. Actually, let me just do this in the next video, because I have to do just three more problems, so I might as well just do a, a video for it.